Good evening from Los Angeles, California. I'm Dr. Ryan Ava. With some of the races too close to call, the control of the House and the Senate is still up for grab. However, one thing is clear, there was no red wave. And with the President Biden's low job approval rating, many had expected the history to repeat itself. But thanks to Trump, this didn't happen. Why? To put it in a Trumpian term, the word on the street is that many candidates did not want him on their campaign trail at all. Unlike Republicans in 2010 that wanted to make sure they had no association with Bush, the Bush years, or Democrats I, in 2018. I was there. Right. Or Democrats <laughs> in 2018 who said, oh, no, 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 we're not the Hillary Clinton party. We're, we're something different. Right, right. This party didn't do that. There was no new party smell, right? Where's your new car smell? There was no new party smell, and I think voters sniffed it out. Yeah, about uh, two months ago, when you thought the red wave was beginning, mm -hmm. Trump was kind of quiet in Florida. He wasn't getting a lot of publicity except from the January 7th hearing. And so you weren't hearing from him. And Biden was out there. And I was going, hot dog, come on, Mr. President, give as many speeches as you can, stumble a little bit, make us squirm with your mistakes or whatever. And I was going, we're going to win this. And daggum, then with a week or so ago, yeah. Trump had to get on the stage and I'm coming to Pennsylvania, I'm coming to Ohio, I'm coming to North Carolina. I'm, I'm going out there whether you want me or not. In fact, I know some candidates who did not want him to come. Is there any doubt that this And they couldn't Oz? say no. Right. Is it any doubt no, it hurt no. Dr. Oz? I oh, think being there did. at the yeah, end with Matt Strix, the only on that stage, yeah. it, looked, it was a terrible thing to do. But I also think there's something about the agenda here. You know, while the president may have low approval ratings, the agenda is quite popular. You talk about inf the infrastructure bill. You talk about the bipartisan gun law. Those are some of the things that candidates talked about. There were very few Democratic candidates who were in their districts yelling about Joe Biden, but they were talking about some of these issues and running mm. on the agenda. Who got kicked off the stage by Trump? DeSantis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. He, he wasn't asked either. to come. Probably the best <laughs> it, thing that it, ever it, happened to DeSantis. Worked out he worked out. Right. It worked yeah. out. He I didn't did. have to say no. So, yeah. so I want to say something about Warnock um, that, that, that I found out. He took Johnny Isaacson, the, the mm -hmm. seat that he replaced, right. beloved. Johnny was like one of everybody's favorite senators. He kept that staff on and then immediately started doing constituent services, hmm. addressed uh, uh, Georgia's concern. When you go to, to Arizona, Guess what? In Arizona, he talked about water. He talked about the border. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mark Kelly. And the other thing about Arizona that's interesting is why, if you're running for a seat in Arizona, do you take on the McCain family? I mean, there's no positive to that. Mm. And so at the end of the day, Jimmy and Jack got on the stage, stage yeah. with Kelly and said, he's our guy, bringing, bringing that aura, you know, that Republican moderate vote um, to, to Kelly. And Jonah jo jo Goldberg put it well. He said, can you imagine somebody at the Nike store yelling at a, asking customers, any of you here ever buy Adidas? Get out of the store! I don't want to sell you a Nike. Or say I hate right. Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, no, you want to, oh, you're, oh, McCain person is here. Great. I want to bring you know, it in. There is one point. Crazy that yeah. There is one point that I don't think has been stressed. A lot of this current state, the decisions were made months ago by Schumer and McConnell. Mm -hmm. Super PAC money controlled by them, which is a conflict of interest out of this world, a whole nother issue. You have a personal stake in this one? <laughs> no, that's in the primary by the Club for Growth. But the super PAC money and the decision Schumer and McConnell had to make yeah. months ago predetermined who had the ground game. Now, in those states where both of them put their money, i.e. Pennsylvania, Schumer won Pennsylvania. You saw a lot of money right now in Arizona. You're seeing a lot of money in Nevada by both of them. A lot of money in them. Georgia. North yep. Carolina. Was all Democrat Schumer pulled out and left uh, uh, Beasley out cold, even though she out fundraised. Is that the one backseat driving the Democrats deserve is a whiffing on North Carolina? Yeah, look, I think that the DSCC should be kicking themselves, that uh, Chuck Schumer's aligned pack should be kicking themselves. National yeah. Democrats could have done more to bolster, to bolster Sherry Beasley. There were three races where the Republicans spent million, like millions and millions of dollars. It was Georgia, it was Pennsylvania, and the third race where they spent the most money was North Carolina against Sherry Beasley. That was a winnable race, and they would Think about it. how well she did without the help. To support my work, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to hit the bell icon so you wouldn't miss any of my new videos. Thanks for watching.